Hi everyone, it's Dr. Harris. I just want to give you a rundown of research materials from our library. It's a really good place to go, but you also need to know how to find all the databases and not just use OneSearch. So OneSearch is this first bar that you get and you can type anything in there, but you're not getting specific things from them. So what we want to do instead is go to the databases, not the subject guides, but the databases themselves. So online library resources, you can do find books and articles, you can use OneSearch or databases by subject. I like to go to the A to Z databases so then I can find them all myself. Now you all know how to use Project Muse, JSTOR, Academic Search Premier. Those are ones that are normal to use in order to find peer-reviewed scholarship by other scholars. Now that's going to be people who are scholars, professors like me, who are writing about uh, topics and they have an opinion about them or they've got an argument about them and they're using lots of texts. So you look at those kinds of things, the peer-reviewed materials, as a way to see what other people are arguing and then use that to build into your research paper. But if you need historical, contextual information, it's always good to go to the source. So here's one that I always like to use. It's called the Oxford English Dictionary and it's a database. I'm going to go all the way down. You do need to be logged in for it. So this is not your normal kind of dictionary, and this is the only dictionary you should ever use when you're doing any sort of research at all. No professor wants to see um, a, just a generalized representation of, of a word itself, denotation, right? Because it doesn't give us anything, especially if it's a word that we know. For instance, you wouldn't want to write, insanity is blah 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 according to the Merriam-Webster or dictionary.com. Instead, you want to investigate what's the history or the etymology of that word and where did it appear in print at first and does it have multiple meanings and which of those multiple meanings is most what I want to talk about. All right. And when you insert a dex dictionary definition, it means that you're going to argue about how it's applied. What does it represent? You don't just provide it as a point of information, right? So no English professor ever wants to see a paper that uses the dictionary defines insanity as because it's not helpful at all, okay? So let's go ahead and look up insanity just in the quick search. So we'll see that we've got, this is an outline of insanity as a noun, and you can see all the other entries here. Now what these entries do is give a timeline of the progress and use of this particular word as a noun. You can see the full entry as well. I always like to look at that. So it goes through and gives you the frequency in current use, which is really important because then that tells you it's popular at any particular time. So the etymology where it comes from, and don't go look at the thesaurus or categories, let's take a look at this. The condition of being insane, unsound of mind as a consequence of brain disease, madness, or lunacy. So insanity of mind might be something that we could use on a novel if we're talking about a character. And here this listing is where did the show, where did this particular use and definition of insanity or insanity of the mind show up? Well, it first showed up in a print text in 1590 by H. Swinburne. Now remember, it's, this is going to be fiction and nonfiction. You might also take a look at this one in particular. T. Arnold, Observations on the Nature, Kinds, Causes, and Prevention of Insanity. Now the thing is, where do you find all this stuff? You can go and look this up on Google Books. They have scanned millions of books, primarily from the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries in English. So you would be able to read this yourself, right? So that this could lead you to your historical context, right? And you might use the, 50, oh, it's 1590, it started here. You can read some of this. And then you can see if there's patterns that start to be established in terms of how was the concept of insanity formulated. So this is how we would use 
this Oxford English Dictionary database. Now you can go to these other ones. So this this is really this first one is really about psychosis or psychology and you have to remember that psychology or psychiatry was not invented until the early 20th century. So if you're reading a novel prior to the early 20th century, you might have to look up insanity. Um, here by itself, or you can look up other keywords. You'll see that it's also referenced to extreme folly or want of sound sense. So this means that you're calling somebody insane. You don't really, it's not really a reference to their psychological state of mind and their mental health. It's really much more of a use of figurative language, right? Somebody is the image of insanity. And here we see Thomas Arnold's work popping up again. To lose which would be rather our insanity than our misfortune. So, so setting up a metaphor here, insanity and mis compared to misfortune. We also get Ralph Waldo Emerson and, and we also have Spencer in the first prints. So these two, this one's a set of lectures and this one is, I believe, this is a work of fiction, but don't quote me on that. So you see how this, this one stepping stone can lead to other things, right? So let's go over to the next thing that I wanted to talk about. Google's Ingram Viewer. So the Ingram Viewer is very important because this is the actual books that Google scanned in and you can see patterns and trends over time. So for instance, you can, but you have to set this up to make sure that you're seeing everything that you'd like to see. For instance, the corpus here, choose your years. What if we wanted to go before that? Let's say 1600 to 2019. I think that's the farthest you can go. So we'll apply that. And then the next thing we do is we look at the corpus of the books scanned. Those scanned in English or American English or British English or English fiction or Chinese or on from there. So let's just go with the easy one and do English 2019. That means all the books uh, that they've got up to 2019. Let's make sure we do case insensitive, meaning we don't have to have initial caps. It'll find everything. Uh, and the smoothing, you can choose the type of smoothing, meaning what do the ridges look like? What are the percentages? All right. So one thing you want to note when you're hitting all of these, just look at the visualization here. Uh, the numbers or the percentages, that's in all of the entire corpus itself. So that doesn't mean missing persons has been used in a tiny way. This is just in the print works. And this also includes magazines and newspapers in addition to fiction and nonfiction. Uh, and any type of literary, it's more than literary text, which is really helpful to do. There's some, some science writings in here as well. So let's go with insanity, right? So let's see what we come up with with insanity. Wow, what the heck happened in 1883 that the word insanity is used so much? So Frankenstein was published in 1818 and we see that there's a little spike and then it goes up from there in the use of insanity. So this is just a visualization and starts to give you a hint about where you could start to look in Google Books to read the instances of the use of insanity. So if you scroll down the page a little bit, you see it says search in Google Books and it gives you different categories of times to search through. So let's pick 1812 to 1881 and they automatically generate these from Google so you can't control the year timelines until you get into the search itself. So what comes up here is all of them and you can sort them in several different ways. You can say any books, Google eBooks, free Google eBooks, preview available, so you can make it to books that you can read right off your screen for free. Now, you can do any document, books, magazines, or newspapers. Newspapers are super interesting to read because they weren't normalized in terms of their format or what was required to go into them. So that means there was no nice and neat letters to the editor, they were spread all throughout. And the cool thing is now that you can search through all these historical newspapers through Google Books as well as a Library of Congress version of a uh, newspaper database. So you can see newspaper reviews of novels from all the way back to let's say uh, 1750. 
So the newspapers became daily newspapers on, in the English-speaking world only as of about 1790 for a variety of reasons. So you won't have hundreds and hundreds of newspapers to look at until you get to about 1800. But they're really interesting to see and you can take a tidbit for your historical context research source in doing this. So you can also narrow down the times. So you can do a custom range and say you only wanted to do, oh, let's just stay within a particular time period. Let's make it, well, let's make it even tinier than this. So 1800 to 1830, what do we get? Okay. Wow. Remarks on insanity founded on the practice of John Mayo. So 1870, there's, 1817, there is somebody writing on what is insanity. And remember, psychology and psychiatry doesn't come around formally until the very early 20th century with Freud. So at this point, they're equating insanity with different things. So dive into this to see what it is you can see. An inaugural dissertation on insanity by this guy from 1811. A treatise on insanity in which are contained, and then it goes on in 1806. So you might narrow this down even further to around the time when whatever novel that you're looking at was actually published. So can we say 1810 to, um, I don't know, 1818? Oops and go from there. So we get narrowed down even further and you can sort by relevance or date. Let's sort by date. Practical observations on the causes and cure of insanity. Now when you're doing historical work you're not looking for what the author actually read. You're looking for concepts that were created during that particular historical moment and this would be valid because it's 1818 practical observations. This is the conversation that was happening at the time that a novel was published in there. Say Mary Shelley's Frankenstein which was published first in 1818 but she began writing it in 1816. Practical observations on the causes and cure of insanity. This would be really interesting. What is insanity? Do they mention the drugs that they use? Are they saying laudanum, meaning opium? Okay. So you see how this is really useful. And if you were going to do something about nature versus nurture, you might also put that into this box as well here. Or if you were going to look at, say, beauty and the representation of beauty. So you might look at beauty preceding the publication of whatever novel or historical event that you're looking at. So for me, I might look at, whoa, 1643 to 1819 with beauty. And let's narrow that down because <laughs> that's a lot of stuff to look at. So let's do 1750, maybe I can pull up some philosophers, to 1819. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's sort by date. Uh, and it goes backwards. So the very last, if we scroll down, we'll see how many there are and how many pages. I might go to page 10 and start there first and start with 1786. Observations relative chiefly to picturesque beauty. Oh, that's an interesting description of beauty. Maybe you want to investigate that in, say, Frankenstein and the representation of beauty and what's required of beauty and what is this thing called picturesque beauty, All right? And you'll see that there's Gilpin uh, again, and maybe this is the guy I should check out because he's coming up a lot, a lot with, with William Gilpin. All right, so those are just two ways to dive into the historical context or the historical materials that you might want to look up to help you investigate uh, your particular literary texts for your research paper.